Right, you be, it's Boots Owen here. I've posted a video recently of this little regulator um, for a washing machine motor, which is the motor here. I've got it wired in, and I'm just going to give it a bit of a spin here today. It's uh, quite an interesting one. Let's have a look at the instructions for it. I picked it up off eBay. Here's the name of the guy. Arkhangelsk, Russia. So I don't know if that's the guy's name or what that is. He doesn't seem to have anything else. I presume it's a he, could be a lady, written on it. So here's the wiring diagram. This is the block on the control board here. So this block here is this block on the control board and you've got taco and motor written here. And you run those cables to the washing machine. So the taco comes in so you run those cables to the washing machine motor, and I've got them set up here. You find the two that go to the taco, and in this case I think it's the two on the left. Yep, that's it. Then the other two cables, you run one of them into the stator, which is any of the windings, and then you put a loop in from the other end of a stator to the one of the brushes on the rotor, and then the other brush back up to the motor. It doesn't matter which way around you go, but to reverse the direction, you have to switch over, I think, these two wires here. And there's a switching arrangement for changing direction. So I've just mounted it on a piece of wood, screwed from below, nothing fancy. And it comes with this little potentiometer, which goes in here and is pre-wired. So... Oh, and I've got no earth on it as well, because there's nowhere to put an earth. You could earth the washing machine motor, I guess. So let's get this set up. Let's put a little bit of tape around here so we can see that the motor is going around in the video. And let's plug it in. You've got a green light comes on. And it's hunting there for... So the potentiometer must have... Yeah, it must have had been turned on a little bit. The clicking noise you can hear there is the brushes. But we're rotating against the direction. Brushes are in like this. And if they were in like that, you wouldn't hear the clicking. But once we speed it up, that clicking goes away. And it's pretty good. Once you set the speed, it just holds it there. You select the speed, it'll hold it. And there are some little um, pots here. I don't know what they are actually. I think they're potentiometers, the little blue boxes with little brass screws on them. And you can adjust them according to the instructions for setting kind of a, kind of a regulating the speed, maximum, minimum, and the ramp up speed I think it is, although I'm saying that, I'd have to read it again to check that. If you want to read this, press pause, and again, and again, and again, this is the way I have it wired up at the moment, and again. Ah, to change direction, what you do is you swap the brushes over, swap the wire coming in and out of the brushes, simple as that, and then there's a wiring diagram for a double pole switch, I guess it is, to automatically reverse it with a switch. And it says, yeah, double pole, double throw switch. And it says, don't do it when the motor's going around. It must uh, put a back EMF through the board or something and go zap. Let's plug it out again. I'm going to closer look at this board. That's it there. It says it's an AC commutator motor speed regulator, which is what we know it is. It's based on the TDA 1085C chip. That's this chip here. And it's made by MU Design or made by, maybe the board's printed by MU Design or that's an online thing, but it's a Russian eBay job. I'm quite impressed by it. There's a potentiometer, nothing fancy. I've mounted it on this little angle bracket just because the hole was the right size and uh, screwed it down to the wood. And I would make an enclosure out of a lunchbox or something like that, or a proper enclosure if I was going to do it 
or when I'm going to do it because I want to use it on this grindstone over here. I've got it set up already with the motor. I had it with a treadle arrangement in the past but that's just redundant now and I've got it wired directly. So all I need to do is connect up the tachograph and these two cables to the control board and then it should work on this one. So let's give that a go. Okay so back on the board over here I've got it wired into the mains this is all live and that's just plugged in green lights on the brown cable is the one going to the rotor stator arrangement to the motor bit and the white cable is going to the taco so then up on the motor up here they're arranged as appropriate and that little black cable is making a loop between the brushes and the coil one of each so let's just in case anybody wants to see this here it's an ac motor this came out of a UK washing machine, like a Hot Point or a Creda, something like that. So then, if I turn up the it seems to do it pretty pretty well, really. It's skipping a bit. That belt is skipping there. The motor can deliver too much power. I don't want to go too fast with this because even though it has a big reduction, if that stone was spinning at 1500 revs or something like that, I believe it would be pretty fast. I'm not even halfway there. I'm not even halfway there at the moment, but I'm gonna turn that right down again. And plug it out. It seems to work really well, even with that massive flywheel, which should really uh, put the load on it. So what's happening there is when I'm turning up the power, that squeaking noise is the motor overreaching or, or over speeding compared to the belt. So the belt is slipping, is what I should say. So when I turn up the speed there, or adjust the speed, you hear that quip, quip, quip. That kind of noise is just the belt slipping, and it could be that the tension isn't right because it's pretty, because it's pretty loose there, arguably. Um, but it does seem to work, and this is the arrangement I have here for holding this motor on. It's uh, it, it's one of these old timey motors that you don't see on washing machines anymore. Now all the they're all made to fit pretty well, but in the old ones you had to tension up the machine. So I've got a piece of threaded bar here as a pivot point, and it goes through the lugs. On the motor and then I've got this bar here as a tensioner and I can just loosen it here and there's a, a bolt going through there loosen it off and adjust it to put it put, pull it down to put a bit more tension on it not sophisticated at all it probably needs a bit more tension but what I was thinking is I think one of those pots the blue pots on the control board regulates the ramp up speed so it could be that I can adjust that out of it so it doesn't skip so that's my first attempt with this little board, running something that's probably a little bit over overwhelming for it. But, uh, you know, it does seem to take it without any stress. I wonder what it'd be like in the long term, but well, I guess I'll find out in the long term. So there you go. Thanks for watching. See you later.